I am less successful today than I was five years ago. And I really want to talk about it. Put a finger down if you used to be a regular host and panelist on a women's TV show that was aired on national television, got paid with very good money to do so, and got to film live to tape every single week. If you've watched any of my other videos on passion fruit, you've probably caught on to the fact that success, this whole idea of achievement and stuff is very close to my heart and something that I'm passionate about breaking the stigma around. So in today's video, if you only walk away with these two truths, then that will be enough for me. First of all, it is completely normal to freak out about the trajectory and the direction of your life. Everyone does. And second of all, that success is not a linear trajectory. Flashback to 2014. Oh, I was graduating high school and I wanted to leverage the fact that I was an intellectual child, that I was getting good grades, and I wanted two things out of my chosen career. First of all, I wanted it to be something that would earn me respect and admiration. I wanted to be seen. I wanted to be seen as the, the successful human being. And secondly, I wanted lots of money. So naturally, what did I pick? A career in law. Looking back, that was a terrible decision and motivated by all the wrong things, but that is, that's a separate video. Anyway, being a student in a university with a lot of budding lawyers, you soon learn that you need to really exude a lot of confidence in order to get anywhere in life. So I decided that I would take up any kind of public speaking opportunities that I could. So anyway, I was asked, this is a very, very small thing that I was asked to do, but I still jumped at it. I was asked to do the welcome one day in my local church. And I was like, yeah, I got this, no worries. So I got up the front and I was super confident, super friendly, super welcoming, didn't think anything of it. Anyway, after the service, uh, someone came up to me and asked, hey, would you be interested in screen testing for the show that I'm producing? And I honestly didn't even know what those words meant. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, sure. Anyway, I turn up to this audition. I go to the office. I'm led down the series of staircases into this amazing recording studio. There's cameras everywhere, fancy lights, all these guys walking around, you know, tech people doing their thing. And I'm putting this chair next to like maybe five other women, all of whom are at least, at least 10 years, 15 years older than me. I was 19 at this point. I was 19. Just a baby. I'm just a baby. I'm surrounded by barristers and businesswomen and people that have been in their industry for like 20, 30 years. And I'm just this little girl sitting there waiting for them to tell us what to do. The producer says, okay, everyone, just act natural and talk about this topic. And so we do, and we start talking, having a discussion. The cameras are filming. I don't really know what's going on. But anyway, about an hour goes by and they're like, thanks everyone, we'll be in touch with you. Okay. So I didn't really think anything of it. I just left and assumed that nothing would come from it. Anyway, about a week later, I get a call from the producer and he's like, hey, we really loved your screen test. Uh, would you come back for further discussion around this? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. So this show was essentially going to be a talk show for professional women, women in the workplace. What a cool concept. Amazing. But fast forward a few months and what they quickly figured out was that actually Professional women aren't available at 11 o'clock on a Tuesday to film a show because they're at work. And so they had a lot of trouble like finding people to fill the roles. Except for me, I was still there. It's like, yeah, cool, I can do that. I'm a uni student, no worries, mate. So again, fast forward a couple more months and the, sh the show transitions from being a women, professional women kind of a show to a mother's show because moms do have time at 11 o'clock on a Tuesday in theory. Anyway, so I found a few other people to fill these different roles. Women of different ages and stages in life. Some had babies, some had teenagers. And then there was me with no babies on a mother's talk show. And at this point, I was convinced. I'm like, nah, this is not. Nah. I'm 100% going to get cut from this list because they found all these amazing women to fill in the slots that they couldn't find before. And what am I doing here? But lo and behold, they kept me on because they liked me for whatever, <laughs> God knows why. God actually knows why. And the rest is history. So I ended up on this show called Mums at the Table. It was aired on national television. I got paid amazing amounts of money to literally talk for like half an hour once a week.
welcome to Mums at the Table, the place where a whole bunch of women get together and talk about all kinds of things. <laughs> life, faith, food, relationships, all that good stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, it was not easy. It was so, so hard. It, like, tests all of your confidence and ability to communicate. But also, there's so much multitasking because you're looking at the camera, which camera is filming. You can't look into the camera, but you need to be aware of what's filming. You need to be aware of your body language. You can't talk too fast. You have to be on topic. You have to ask leading questions and continue the conversation. The conversation is all filmed live to tape, which basically means that it's not live to air, but there's no editing. You can't cut halfway through. And so it's basically doing it live. So you have to be aware of how many minutes you have left of every segment. It's just, it's crazy. It was crazy, but I loved it. I loved it so much. And I was convinced at the time that you know, because I didn't love law, I never loved law, and again, that is a video for another time. But I'm a creative at heart, if you can't tell. And I was convinced at this point, I was like, I should be a television presenter. I could totally do this. This is amazing. I get paid so much money. I get respect. Wow. Anyway, I did this show for, I think, three or four years, and from it came a bunch of other opportunities. I got to host, like, a essentially like a documentary that was in, you know, 10 or 15 different episodes about faith. Uh, I, got to, I got to host all kinds of things and even today I'm still asked to host different events and stuff but my life now, this is real talk now guys, this is real talk. Comparing my life at that point, I was like, I was living my absolute best life. I was so successful. Today I do not host a women's TV show. Today I am not involved in any show that airs on national television. I'm not really doing anything in front of a camera except for YouTube, which love you guys. But you know, it's not it's not quite the same thing. Um, I'm not working four different jobs and studying my amazing career in what was going to be law. Comparing myself then to myself now, any stranger, not friend, but stranger looking in would be like, oh, she's working, she's doing her own little business, working from home. She's a creative soul, that's lovely, but this 19 year old though who's on national television oh my goodness slaying it live wow now obviously i've been talking about my own experience in this video but i'm sure that in some capacity you can also relate to this and it really got me thinking about all of the things that i used to be better at 10 years ago 15 20 years ago than i am now and i have a list you ready <clears throat> number one making digital collages I don't know if you remember back in the day, there was this website called Polyvor and it was like this fashion editorial, like magazine creation. It was the most, it was the most amazing thing. Honestly, if they still had it today, I would be obsessed still. But I was like, so, so good at these. And I was like 12. Second, coding websites. Now, okay, I know that the world has changed since 2004 and we were all using HTML and CSS, but I was obsessed with Neopets and also MySpace, <laughs> which ages me. But I used to code all of the different things on there and you know, change the background color, change the header and body. And I still know like the text for a link, A-H-R-E-F equals quote, quote, link, unquote, little bracket, name of link, little bracket, little, thing slash a on um, it i think thing i also used to be able to twist my arms over my head and skip through them like a skipping rope i don't recall having any footage of this unfortunately but if i did you would be disgusted because i would literally like literally like and then they would go over my head and then i would skip through them i'm double jointed but can't do that anymore. Ugh, so sad. What a waste. Number five, writing essays. As I was going through law school, oh my goodness, my essay writing skills were chef's kiss. Even in high school, they were pretty darn good. But now I can't even remember. Like there's like a topic sentence and a quote and this and that and the other. Number six, maths. Who knew that we wouldn't need to use binomial equations every day of our lives? Unbelievable. All of that to say, it's okay if you feel like you're going backwards. Honestly, this idea that success is somehow this linear, upwards, consistent trajectory towards some amazing goal and that you're always getting better every single day is kind of ridiculous when you really think about it. But the problem is, 
we don't really think about it. We just accept the fact that that is what is meant to be. And then when it doesn't happen for us, we freak out and have like a quarter life, half life, three quarter life crisis and wonder, why me? Bruh. No one's success path is linear. It, it just, that doesn't make any sense in a world that is so random. Let me get this straight. It is not bad to succeed. It is amazing to be successful. But the problem happens when we equate being successful with being a valuable human being. That's when the cookie starts to crumble, you know? You know what I'm saying? That belief is toxic, unhelpful, and honestly causes us to fall into these shame spirals where we feel like we can't talk about the fact that we feel like we're falling behind and we're a failure and we just get in our heads about it. And that thought cycle in and of itself prevents us from being successful. Does that make sense? Life is not meant to be linear. Life is meant to be topsy-turvy. And I think it's actually so healthy for us to have experiences where we do go backwards because it teaches us what is most important in life. Because in my life, it's all the times where I've gone backwards that I've actually clarified my purpose. Because I, I may not be as successful now by other external measures, but I am so much more content. I'm so much happier. I'm so much more focused on what it is I want in life. I know myself better. And sure, some of that comes with growing up and experiencing life and all that stuff. But when I was 19, all I was doing was seeking after any experience that would bring me some kind of like kudos, some kind of respect, money, fame, status. The default why that people have in society is just upwards momentum, trajectory. But if you have to scale back and move back in with your parents into their basement to write an album that's going to launch you into stardom, or even not, just to like write the album because you value music that much, that's life changing. And when you're lying on your deathbed, not to be morbid, when you're lying on your deathbed, that is not something you will ever regret, ever. You would regret not doing that. You would regret just continuing down your career path and never pursuing that passion. I think it's so important to go against the grain. So important to go against the grain because it gives you this like unflinching sense of self, this much stronger sense of self and who you are and you know your why a lot better. And so passion for it, <laughs> it's in the title. We are very passionate about helping you find your passions. And I just want to challenge you that if you feel like you're going backwards in life at the moment, that could actually be a really good sign that you're exactly where you need to be. Anyway, that's all I had to say. I hope you found this video somewhat helpful. Please, if you have any questions or you want to continue this conversation around success and around feeling behind or being less successful now than you were a few years ago, whatever the case may be, please leave the comments below. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you have a wonderful week or until I see you next, God bless. See you later. Bye.